Good evening, councillors, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first virtual cabinet meeting. As a webinar meeting, this meeting is being recorded and can be viewed afterwards on the council's website. Um, the agenda we have before us tonight is doesn't actually fit best practice for video meetings. Presently, there are eight items on the agenda. Um, best practice for video meetings would be shorter and sharper. Questions should be submitted before. And could I remind everybody, if not speaking, microphones to be muted so as not to cause background no noise. Obviously, the work going on from here, reports may need to be streamlined and new protocols introduced. So we'll move in to uh, other items and that will be, I will make, I may make note at this point that we'll be journeying after, adjourning after item seven this evening because that item eight requires a lot more in-depth discussion and the sheer size of this agenda will not actually promote that sort of discussion. So we will be adjourning this item and then we'll be re uh, re the meeting at the earliest possible time. So you'll have to watch out for the notices from that. Moving on to the preliminaries. And have I the cabinet's permission to sign the minutes of the meeting of the cabinet held on the 19th of February 2020? Um, if you have any comments or questions on the accuracy or the minutes, please use the chat facility. If there are no comments, I will assume you are in complete agreement for me to sign those minutes. There's, there's no chat, Lorraine. Um, are there any apologies? I have no apologies, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> um, I would like to inquire whether any members wish to declare any interest in respect of any items on the agenda. None, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. I'd also like to inquire whether any officers wish to declare any interest in respect to any items on the agenda. Uh, Chairman, the three statutory officers would, would have declared an interest in item eight, but as that has now been adjourned, obviously they will declare at that time. Thank you very much for that. Um, are there any questions from members of the public? There are no questions, Chairman. Thank you. Moving on to part two, gender items. Are there any recommendations from the overview and scrutiny committees for this meeting? There are none for this meeting, Chairman. Thank you. Are there any recommendations from the Boston Town Area Committee? None for this meeting, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what I'd like to do at this point is um, actually move item seven up the agenda which is the Boston Crematorium Cremators. And the next, this is going to be the next item. And I'd like to ask Councillor Yvonne Stevens to present. Could you bring Councillor Stevens to the screen, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In presenting this paper, um, my previous conversations with cabinet colleagues have been all about securing the future prosperity of the cre uh, crematorium service, and this remains my long-term ambition. However, issues and events that have occurred more recently require the urgent attention of cabinet before those ambitions can be realized. 
This is the first opportunity I've had to bring a report before Cabinet since the maintenance company contracted to service our cremators entered administration in March. We currently have no contract maintenance in place and the condition of our cremators are such that no companies are willing to take them on. A legacy of poor quality, poor, of poor quality, poorly executed maintenance has left us with two cremators that are unreliable and temperamental in their operation. This is a situation that staff on site can no longer manage and a risk the council cannot tolerate. Doing nothing is not an option. The council is exposed to unacceptable risk and potential failure of crucial, critical infrastructure. The council has accrued capital in reserves that has been replenished by the, by the service. And I ask Cabinet to exercise their discretion, use these funds to support the recommendations in this report. It is vital we act decisively and with urgency. So that's my report, um, uh, Chairman. Thank you very much for that, uh, Councillor Stevens. Um, I will now ask the Cabinet members if they have any questions on this report. Um, and what I'll do is I'll bring them in one by one. Um, I'm not sure whether Councillor Brown is with us yet. Councillor Brown? I am with you. I can hear everything. I, you can't see me. Um, I need to press something. Can you see me, Paul? Um, well, you, you can't come in. That's that's fine as you are. Have you got any questions? Oh, have you got any questions for uh, Councillor? No, not at this stage. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Griggs. Have you got any questions? Uh, more of a few comments, really. Firstly, I mean, obviously, we all understand that the current COVID situation left us in an untenable situation. Although, I do query in. Um, section one of the report uh paragraph three where it says independent cremator design and performance appraisal commissioned by the council etc etc um identified fundamental design flaws with our cremator and obviously that was only identified in august of last year but i'd like some information further in the future um stating how come it wasn't realized until they'd been in for a number of years and operating as such obviously now it, it doesn't help us because the company have gone bust so we won't be able to get money back for them but it would have been nice if it, the problem had have been identified beforehand and it'd be interesting to see why it wasn't and obviously i think the report yeah it's, it's self-explanatory we can't leave ourselves without cremators it's an important service for the residents of boston uh, i think that's my only comment thank you thank can, you can can I come in there, uh, leader, please? Of I you think can. I thank you. I think Councillor uh, Griggs will be uh, when I present the recommendations. I think he will feel quite satisfied uh, with what the recommendations are. Um, so if you can just bear with me till till we get to that point, and thank you. I, I'm, I'm sure he'll bear with us on that. Thank you, Yvonne. Councillor Howard. Yes, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, no, I'm OK with everything that um, Councillor Stevens has presented. I've had a look at the report. Uh, there's a lot of detail there, answers uh, a lot of questions, uh, but I'm OK with everything. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Howard. Councillor Sharman. Hi, nothing to add it re other than it reads really well. It's br yeah, brilliant report. Thank you. Councillor Welton. Yes, thank you, Leader. Um, just a few comments I'd like to make, and 
first of all, I'd like to thank Councillor Stevens for her tireless work in identifying this and how she has dealt with it like a dog with a bone. Um, unfortunate um, statement, but that's exactly what she's like. She has hounded us as a cabinet over the last few weeks um, relentlessly to ensure that this report is correct, is accurate, and that everything has been done that can be done at this stage to ensure that the cremators we have are operating as best they can do. So for that, I'd like it on record that Councillor Stevens is, is thanked for the work she's put in. I think without her drive and determination to make this happen, we would probably be in a much worse position. So thank you, Councillor Stevens. The report is very detailed, it's very concise, and um, I'm happy with the recommendations in the record report and I look forward to your recommendations. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor Welton. Um, I am in the same position as Councillor Welton. I've gone through the report. I know how tenacious Yvonne has been through for the period of this report. Um, and it just, rem just are you, would you like to propose the report and give me the recommendations, read out the recommendations, please? Thank you, Chairman. Um, Chairman, I move the recommendations in the report with minor amendments as follows. One, approve the purchase of a temporary replacement cremator and two, seek a further report on the long-term solution, including the potential uh, additional uh, of abatement and invite scrutiny to consider the report. Three, and approve an exemption from contract procurement uh, procedure rules, part four, section H, under 3.1.1, brackets two. An exemption is necessary because of any unforeseen event involving significant disruption to council services. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Do we have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Griggs, I'm happy to second the proposal. Um, when Councillor Stevens said, wait until the uh, recommendations, I had read the report and I was aware of you know, the, the plan going forward. It's more information about information in the past that I would like. But I'm sure I'll speak to Councillor Stevens outside the meeting. But happy to second the recommendation. Thank you for that. I'm sure she will um, expedite that information with the usual uh, vigour. Right, the recommendation have been moved and seconded. So I'll move to a vote. Um, could you turn the cabinet microphones on, please? Lorraine will call out the names in alphabetical order and they will respond. Thank you, Leader. I will um, do a roll call for cabinet members. It's not a recorded vote as such. It's just the easiest way of, of doing the vote while we're doing video conferencing. So if you could respond for, against or abstain. Councillor Brown. For, can you hear me? Yes, Councillor Brown. You hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, Councillor Brown. This is useless, absolutely useless. I can't. Never mind, carry on. I can hear you anyway, and, and, and thank goodness you can hear me. So four, please. Thank you. Councillor Griggs? Four. Councillor Howard? Four. Councillor Sharman? Four. Councillor Skinner? Four. Councillor Stevens? Four. Councillor Welton? Four. The recommendations are carried unanimously, Mr Chairman. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Move, moving back on to um, the agenda as published, um, the item is the Air Quality Action Plan. And once again, I will ask Councillor Yvonne Stevens to present the report. Could you bring Councillor Stevens to the screen, please? Chairman. Thank you. Boston Borough Council 
has declared two air quality management areas, Haven Bridge Road, established 2001, and Bargate Bridge, 2005. And this is due to the air quality at these locations failing to meet the UK air quality objective for nitrogen, nitrogen dioxide. This primarily arises from high usage of private vehicles for making short journeys within Boston. The declaration of the air quality management areas places a statutory obligation on the local authority to produce an air quality action plan. A draft air quality action plan was developed by a steering group. This was led by the environment by environmental health, which was composed of officers from across a number of council departments and with colleagues from Lincolnshire County Council Highways and Public Health. A single plan has been developed as the air quality issues in both areas are the same. The draft air quality action plan has previously been presented to Environmental Performance Scrutiny uh, Committee and Cabinet for comment. And consent was given to consult with a number of statutory and non-statutory consultees and the wider community as is required by Schedule 11 of the Environmental Act 1995. The consultation exercise on the draft plan ran between the 19th of February and the 19th of March this year, 2020. A copy of the consultation plan can be seen at Appendix C. There were two uh, strands to the consultation. Direct correspondence to statutory consultees, such as DEFRA, Environmental Agency, Lincolnshire County Council, and neighbouring local authorities. In addition, direct correspondence was sent to other specific non-statutory consultees, such as the Port of Boston, NHS Trust, Public Health England, and Lincolnshire Chamber of Commerce. In terms of specific statutory and not stat, uh, sorry, and non-statutory consultees, no responses were received to the consultation. The results of the consultation were disappointing considering that the implementation of the plan will need the cooperation of organisations within the group, whilst no formal response was received from Lincolnshire County Council Highways, I would point out that they have already been part of the process of drafting the action plan with the key officers sitting on the working group. In addition, Regular meetings are held with LCC highways officers and LCC councillors regarding transport in Boston, Boston Transport Group. Air quality is part of the remit of the group due to its direct association to traffic. The second strand was an online public questionnaire. This was well publicised on the Council's website and the Council's Twitter and Facebook pages and Boston Bulletin, which is distributed to approximately 4,000 recipients within the, the borough. There were 26 responses received from the wider community. These were generally supportive of the plan. A summary of the responses received can be found at Appendix A in the report. More details can be found within the appendices of the action plan itself. The headline results were 84% agreed, 44% partially agreed, 40% with the overall approach described in the plan to improve air quality. Unfortunately, or 
fortunately, I should say, only 8% disagreed with the overall approach of the plan. Of the measures proposed within the action plan, those responding believed the following measures were most important. This is where it gets interesting. Provision of an outer distributor road, 68% wanted that. Junction improvements to aid traffic flow, 68%. To promote cycling and walking as an alternative to car, 64%. Of the measures proposed when the action plan, those responding believed the following measures were least important. Workplace parking levy, 68%, and investigate reduced car parking charges for EV vehicles and hybrid. And that percentage was 56%. The results of the consultation exercise have been incorporated into the final air quality action plan. No proposed action within the draft plan have been amended following the consultation. With the approval of Cabinet, the air quality action plan will now be submitted to DEFRA through the local air quality management uh, portal for approval and be formally adopted by the Council subject to, DEFRA, to DEFRA's approval of it. The production of an air quality um, action plan does not resolve the air quality issues that we experience, but provides a framework that the Council will try to achieve to improve air quality within the, within, within the management areas and beyond over the coming years. As previously stated, many of the actions within the plan are beyond the powers or remit the Council has of its own. And therefore, for it to be successful in supplementing national air quality strategies implemented by government, other partners will be needed to be willing to engage in its implementation. Of particular importance is the continuing support of Lincolnshire County Council in its role as Highway Authority. And that's the report, uh, Chairman. Thank you. Well, thank you very, very much for, for that. Um, Sorry, it was rather long. Well, unfortunately, these partnership reports tend to be, and you've got over, got, got over. It's not the borough of Boston wholly that deliver the air quality is everybody in the partnership, including DEFRA helping us. Um, the events of the last few weeks have actually improved our air quality no end. So pro probably the figures will look really good. However, I don't recommend the method. Anyway, um, thank you for that. I will now ask the cabinet members if they have any questions on this report. Councillor Brown? Thank you, Chairman. Can you hear me all right? I can, David. You're crystal clear. OK, I just haven't got any vision or anything. Um, anyway, um, if you fail to start hearing me, please shout at me. Um, on page three, uh, 1.8, the production of an air quality action plan does not resolve the air quality issue, but provides a framework for what the Council will try to achieve to improve air quality within the air quality management areas and beyond over the coming years and i would i would seriously suggest that in that um, framework we look at um and uh, councillor stevens has already alluded to a outer ring road and um i've been sort of um bouncing this idea off people for quite some time about an eastern bypass to come off the a16 at the quadrant roundabout go over the fields over the haven you only got one bridge to build and come out at Johnson's Garden Centre. Um, we have been long talking about a, distribu a distributor road running through housing estates and that to me seems the wrong principle. Whenever a new road is built millions of trees are planted. I've just been down the A14 today which has had a multi-million pound facelift and indeed every uh, each side of the uh, new road are millions of trees planted. And that reduces your your nitrogen um, um, 
carbon monoxide, uh, whatever. Forgive me, I'm not a scientist. I don't really understand which one it is. Uh, with regard to the air pollution on um, Bargate Bridge and Haven Bridge, I'm hardly surprised because the traffic there, there's 38,000 traffic movements within 24 hours. So there's the the answer um, staring at us, really. Um, you, we've got to reduce the amount of traffic that comes into the town. Um, and I'm convinced that an eastern bypass would do that. Um, my camera's come on now, so um, you're, you're prob you can probably see me now, can you? Not unless I ask camera to the front. All right, OK. All right, so um, th that's it for me for now. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Councillor Griggs? Yeah, I, firstly, I'd like to thank Councillor Stevens for a well-written report. It's got a lot of information in. My main point, and it's something Councillor Stevens touched upon, is the disappointing response we got to the consultation with um, statutory agencies. For instance, it's got to be passed by the Secretary of State, but they didn't even comment on it in the first place. Same with the Environment Agency. And Councillor Stevens hit the nail on the head. You know, this plan is going to take a lot of working with external partners. Um, so I'm just not particularly impressed with the level of response that they could be bothered to give us. But a fantastic report. Thank you. Councillor Howard? Uh, yes, thank you, uh, thank you, Leader. Um, yeah, again, good detailed report. Uh, well done, Councillor Stevens. Uh, I have no issues with it whatsoever. Councillor Sherman. Hi. Yeah, I can only echo what the other councillors have said. I think it's a brilliant report, and I think it's really important to go forward with it. Thank you, Councillor Welton. Thank you, Leader. No further comments from my point. Thank you. Right. I, I'll, I'll ask Councillor Stevens after this thorough report to um, both propose the report and go through the recommendations. Thank you, Leader. Um, I move these recommendations that are, are carried. And the recommendations are Cabinet one, Cabinet notes the results of the consultation exercise on the draft air quality action plan. Two, Cabinet recommends air quality action plan now formally submitted to DEFRA for approval and adoption by the Council following the consultation on the draft plan. And three, once approved by DEFRA, an updated report, an update report on progress on air quality action plan is presented to Cabinet on a six monthly basis as requested by Cabinet. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. I'm very happy to, to second that. And um, the, Lorraine, uh, will you call out the Cabinet members' names in alphabetical order and will they respond? Thank you, Chairman. Um, as previously, if you could say four against abstain. Councillor Brown? Uh, four. Councillor Griggs? Four. Councillor Howard? Four. Councillor Sharman? Four. Councillor Skinner? Four. Councillor Stevens? Four. Councillor Welton? Four. That's unanimous, unanimously carried, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Moving on to item four is the quarter three report for performance, risk and finance. Um, and the, the way we normally do this is each portfolio presents the information of their area of responsibility as set out in the order of the report. I will take the lead, lead there by presenting my area first. So on the, on the report, um, the first item on the report is to do with sickness. On, on the long-term sickness, we are slightly below target, and the others are other items, sickness and absence overall is on target, and short-term days is on target. 
going on to corporate priority three place, um, the number of antisocial behaviour stage one ASB letters. If we look at last year's quarter three, it was 22. This year, it's 31. We look at stage two antisocial behaviour letters. It is 23 this quarter. Last year, it was one. And the number of acceptable behaviour agreements, um, quarter three this year is seven, and last year it was zero. So this to me would show that our antisocial behaviour team are working well. Um, they've, they've progressed where necessary from stage one to stage two, to also the, the acceptable behaviour. So I'm, I'm really happy to know that the team is working how it should be. Going going on from there, um, the number of civil injunctions secured, quarter three, this time round it's two, and community protection orders and notices and criminal behaviour, zero. So then we move on to quarter three, and we look at the number of CCT directed and assisted arrests. Um, this year on quarter three, we have 72. Last year, quarter three, it was 193. So this would seemingly show that um, we have been not directed to assist by the police often. Um, looking at the number of evidence package, packages um quarter three this year 42 last year 145 now these are the packages that are requested by the police looking again at the number of cct uh, incidents recorded quarter three this year 209 quarter three last year 478 um with also moving on to RIPA, the Regulation in Investigatory Powers Act 2000 um, to carry out surveillance and in investigation. There have actually been no RIPA applications in this quarter three. Uh, however, we had a very good blue light day and there were several positive comments, both fed back through email and also um, through social media. Um, well, well done events team as well. Um, I will now pass over to um, Council, not Councillor Nigel Welton. Thank you, uh, Leader. <clears throat> uh, during this period of performance, um, sorry, during this period the performance was only marginally affected by COVID-19. But I would like to tell you that our planning team have remained open for business throughout the COVID-19 pandemic and we are still receiving and determining planning applications every week. Of the 10 performance indicators in my area, eight are exceeding targets and two are on target. I am particularly pleased to see that the percentage of major applications determined currently stands at 84% against a target of 75%. <clears throat> Minor applications determined currently are 83% against a target of 65 and all other applications 93% against a target of 80%. In relation to complaints, there were five of which two were justified, but I note the one planning complaint that was justified did not have an impact on the decision made. So therefore, I'd like to say thanks to all the teams who work so hard to deliver this performance to the residents of the borough and as as the previous cabinet meeting i'd like to personally add my thanks to the lead officer who ensures that every member of these teams have everything they need to do during this uh, difficult time to carry on doing the work and serving the people of the borough thank you leader Thank you. I'll pass my thanks on to your team as well. Moving on to finance and governance, Councillor Ma Martin Howard, please. Thank you, uh, Leader. Um, yes, um, I'd say I've, I've got some obviously at the end of each everybody's portfolio. 
I've got some headline statements um, regarding risk and performance. Uh, but yeah, um, as I just like to thank uh, Paul Julian and his team uh, who have kept me well informed. Uh, lots of information. Uh, obviously, COVID-19 is going to have a big impact on um, sort of future um, sort of um, quarterly reports. Uh, but obviously, to put it into context, this is the quarter three report. Uh, to the end of December um, 2019, uh, but obviously I'll come back on to headline um, quotes and statements uh, at the end of everybody, all the portfolios. Thank you for that, Martin. Uh, moving on to environmental services, Councillor Yvonne Stevens, would you like to present? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. You're well, my portfolio co covers a, m a multitude of areas, and in the food businesses, um, we are better than uh, the target. That we are above target. So well done to our food safety. Um, going down, the food safety inspections complete completed. Um, we're on target with those. Household waste, refuse, a recycled, composted. Unfortunately, we're a little below um, on that particular target. Um, and also the residual household waste per household. Again, um, we're a little bit below. But um, under the auspices of linkage the auspices of Linkage Waste Partnership, the council is partaking in a 12 month trial with the county, with South Holland and North Kesteven, which aims to improve recycling rates, reduce residual wa waste, and tackle contamination in domestic recycling. Trial runs will, uh, will run until September, and I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about the purple bins. Of the fly tip, um, we tried to respond to fly tip um, within two days, um, and it's been a little difficult with um, this COVID 19 uh, that's been about, and we are a little bit below, but I can understand that with the situation that we're in. But a comment. The 303 fly tips were collected in quarter three. However, the service was off the road for six days over Christmas and New Year due to the unavailability of volunteers and a relief driver. So due to those circumstances, we actually didn't do too badly at all. As far as taxi drivers um, go, was suspended or revoked in quarter three, there was four. Number of vehicles respect, uh, suspended or revoked, 11. This all relates to quarter three. Number of taxi driver vehicles hearings, we had three hearings. Number of premises hearings, uh, sorry, number of premises license revoked, one. And number of licensing at hearings, eight. We, we've got need to have a feather in the cap um, because our commercial waste um, uh, service is growing. Um, and in quarter three, the growth in income in com commercial waste service compared to the previous year, that's up by 32%. That's brilliant. And the growth of the number of commercial waste customers compared to previous year, that's up by 30%. Again, excellent, well done. Um, the contamination in waste recycling. Now, I think Boston can take a bit of um, a feather in its cap because we're below target. We are below what the Lincolnshire average is. So well done, Boston, and let's keep it up. Number of fly tip incidents um, in quarter three. We had 303 
but in two, quarter three, 1819, we had 361. And even though fly tip is a blight on the landscape, um, we are at it. People might not think we're at it quite so much as we are, but we are at it. The, the, the department is really very, very keen. And then fly tips by volume, we've had uh, in this year, quarter three, we've had one that was a significant load. We've had 11 tipper loads. We've had 67 transit vans. We've had 119 um, small vans, 42 car boots and 22 single items. So we, it's all got to change. Um, the number of um, fixed penalty notices issued um, in December, there was 80. The payments due, number of uh, payments due, 24. And the number of payments paid is 52. Um, and any that's written off or cancelled was two. So we're moving on again. And then I'm looking at complaints. There were six complaints about my portfolio and three of them were justified, as you'll see in the paperwork. One was partly justified and two weren't justified. And that's the areas where we're going to have to sharpen our pencil and improve. But on the other hand, we had 15 compliments. So well done for all the compliments. Thank you, Leader. That's my report. Thank you very much very much very comprehensive um just in case people think that uh, the borough's asleep anybody that has fly tipped and left details in their bags will be getting caught up with in in a short amount of time um town center then councillor chelsea shaman would you like to do your report please yeah um the quarterly report for car parking and permit income continues to increase and be above target if you turn to page 106, there is a breakdown of each car park's income. Our market is below target, but will be reviewed as part of the transformation programme, and we will look at ways to start improving its income within that. And that's all for me, Leader. Thank you very much, Chelsea. Um, Thank you. Moving on now to housing and communities. Councillor Martin Griggs, would you like to present your report, please? Yeah, so... First off, the housing completions were um, up on their target. Obviously, the COVID-19 situation may mean that we um, won't realise the overall yearly target. Um, number of affordable homes delivered, we're on target, and we've actually achieved exactly the um, number required. The number of non-local authority-owned properties returned into occupation were nearly double the target. Um, and improve housing standards where miles above the target as well. And I think that's you know, a big thank you to the enforcement guys. And as we in Cabinet know, we struggle to recruit people to that role for the money we'll pay compared to what they can get elsewhere. So I think it's real testament of the hard work they do. Um, the new housing register applications, quarter three is down on all the other quarters this year and lower than the same quarter over historic data. Obviously, again, we don't know what the impact of COVID-19 will be, whether people are fed up with being at home with their spouses or whether once we come out and people can't afford mortgages, etc. obviously we'll have to have a look and see what we can do to help people who need it. But at present, that's it for that one. Uh, we had three complaints, none of which were justified. Unfortunately, we also had no compliments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Martin. Uh, nice to know what's going on in your part of the world. Um, I will now ask all of the cabinet men members if they've got any questions on any part of the reports. So I'll start off with Councillor Brown. Have you got, got any queries regarding the reports? I've got no, um, thank you, Chairman. I've got no queries. I haven't done my report yet. Um, I don't know whether you want to hear that now or, or later. Uh, um, apologies. Continue, Councillor Brown. <laughs> uh, well, firstly, on uh, quarter three, uh, 2019 to 2020, our swim sessions at uh, Jeff Mulder, our target was 122,000, and we achieved 115,000. 
Now, gym memberships, our target for that quarter was 1,350 and we achieved 1,485. And our event income, uh, our target was 13,530 and we achieved 19,166. The Guildhall door count for quarter three has dropped um, from the previous quarter, quarter two was 4,636. And that's dropped to 2942. But again, that quarter is entering into the COVID situation. And of course, um, my next report um, on this on quarter four will be um, somewhat disappointing. Um, we've had four complaints, one of which was justified. And this is a complaint about an injury caused by a barrier at an event, uh, which the outcome was the security company have apologized to the complainant and made a donation to the charity of her choice. In future, we will offer permits in advance to residents and businesses in that area to prove access. I'm delighted to report I've got three and a half full pages of compliments regarding the Christmas um, lights and market. And typically, a very good evening again. Thanks must go to the lads who put so much craft in. Brilliant, excellent for the kids. Looks like it's going to be a fab and wonderful atmosphere, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so that's very, very pleasing. Uh, however, I should warn everybody that these figures that I've quoted just now uh, will obviously be pretty awful uh, when we report back on quarter four because of COVID-19. So, so, so that's my report, um, Chairman. Thank you. Sorry, sorry for uh, you know Storts. <laughs> Uh, stealing your thunder earlier, but I, I think it must have been compliments envy that that uh, really shut me out, shut you out there. Would you like to ask any of the others any any other questions? Um, no, not at the stage, thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Councillor Griggs. Do you have any questions? Um, yeah, one one for you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the number of arrests and CCTV packages. Would you be able to find out? and feedback to cabinet whether that's linked to the number of incidents reported or not because i think we all know as the many residents in boston that crime is potentially higher than the official figures show so it'd be nice to see if our data corresponds with the police's data on incidents reported and then just for councillor howard and councillor brown um councillor howard i think the budget claimant time especially in a world where all we hear is bad news about how long benefits take to sort I was really impressed to see that on many of them were you know, taking less than half of our target time. And Councillor Brown, I just want to echo your comments about the Christmas in Boston event. Obviously, I take my children up there every year and it's great fun. And I think it's all recognition to uh, especially the electricians and the um, Christmas in Boston team. I think they do a fantastic job for the members of the community. So if you could just pass our thanks. Um, thank you, Councillor. Uh, thank you, Martin. Um, let's just hope that we can achieve the same kind of standard again this year. Thank you. I'll just just go back to you, Martin, on the uh, CCTV directed and assisted arrests. That, that the number there is when the police call for assistance and the CCT operators follow. So that those figures are um, down from the year before. So I'm not going to comment on um, anything other than we can only do directed and assisted arrests when we request. The same with the evidence packages. We can only deliver those when they're requested. We normally do uh, a few more anyway, but that's the number that were actually requested for prosecutions. And then the general number of incidents recorded this this time round up to December was 209, where the previous year was 478. So um, our CTV, if anything, has got better with the with the cameras. Um, it it I wouldn't say um, anything other than it does seem to show a drop in trend of the number of incidents recorded because maybe they didn't happen. So. Um, there we go. Councillor Sharman, do you have any questions? No, nothing to add. Thank you. Councillor Stevens? No, Chairman, I don't have anything. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Welton? Everything's fine. Thank you, Lady. 
Thank you very much. Well, we'll move on to the second part, and I will now ask Councillor Howard to present risk and finance information. Thank you, Councillor Howard. Thank you, Leader. Um, yeah, this is uh, the risk and finance uh, headlines for quarter three December. Obviously, uh, again, as been as has been sort of um, stated, uh, things could look very different um, when, when we start looking at COVID. Uh, but finance areas, benefit processing times continue to be good. Uh, collection of council tax and business rates are on target. Uh, the trend, there is a slight reduction in net business rates, but an increase in empties. Uh, another trend, the new housing benefit and council tax support schemes. Um, case led info shows seasonality, and we should have a better comparison once we've got a year's worth of information. Um, there's been a very uh, small number of complaints. We will continue to seek to improve these, but overall performance is, was in line with targets for, for quarter three. Uh, risk, uh, there are no new strategic risks identified for the end of, of December, sorry. Obviously, COVID updates will be necessary next time round and will be incorporated in future quarters. Strategic and operational risks continue to be managed in accordance with the risk management framework. Um, going in, into more detail on risks uh, for quarter three, at the end of quarter three, revenue, a small net underspend is projected and details are in section three. The controlling migration fund in section four shows approximately two thirds spent as at 31st of December. Trading income is in line with the budget. Uh, reserves, the recommendations are to approve movements um, as set out in table six for the reasons uh, shown in the narrative below, which I'm about to read. Treasury and property fund information set out in section seven. Um, capital recommendations are to approve three changes slippage for marginal viability fund and townscape heritage along with new electric charging point scheme and supplementary estimate recommendation also to improve towns fund capacity funding obviously as a, again uh, the covid pandemic will revise these projections uh, and the impacts on 2019-20 will be reported in the outturn report in due course uh, and happy to take any questions and i'm sure um mr julian would help me with anything that uh, i haven't quite got the information for but thank you very much thank you very much councillor howard uh councillor brown do you have any questions uh none at this stage thank you chairman thank you very much councillor griggs no thank you mr chairman thank you councillor sherman nothing no thank you thank you councillor stevens no questions thank you Councillor Welton. Um, nothing on this report, but I just want to reiterate what's been said already that the impact of COVID-19 on our risk management will have a, an impact at some stage. And I know that Councillor Howard is working on that as we speak, and I look forward to a report at the next cabinet on the impact of what we've seen so far. So thank you uh, for the report. Thank you very much. Very, thanks everybody. Um, Obviously, you've done the recommendations, Martin, as well. Um, are you happy to propose your report? Uh, yes, uh, I'm very happy to propose this quarter three uh, update and report. Thank you very much. Uh, do I have a seconder? I'll Councillor second. Welton, I'll second that report. Thank you very much. You it. Well, right then, uh, the recommendations have been moved and seconded, so we'll move to the vote. Um, Lorraine, will you call out the cabinet members' names in alphabetical order so that they may respond? Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Brown? Four. Councillor Griggs? Four. Councillor Howard? Four. Councillor Sharman? Four. Councillor Skinner? Four. Councillor Stevens? Four. Councillor Wilson? Four. It's unanimously carried, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, really good reports from everybody. Thank you. Um, we now move on to um, item five, which is the business rates pilot fund. And um, I shall be re uh, presenting this report. Um,
the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government, formerly the Department of Communities and Local Government, sought areas as part of a 100% business rates retention initiative. Lincolnshire was a, a successful applicant for the pilot status in 2018-2019, and the benefits to us total 388,000, which was placed in reserves. A report in the cabinet on the 5th of June 2019 agreed a set of projects to which this funding was to be allocated. The pilot has really provided a great opportunity to fund a variety of projects the council would normally not have the resources to fund and will help deliver objectives both in the corporate plan and also the economic development plan whilst promoting strong links with stakeholders, partners, etc. The Cabinet received a report with a series of initiatives that would create skills and economic benefits for the whole community. Indeed, the EV charging points mentioned earlier in the report, uh, £18,333 of this spend was committed. Indeed, if we this was in hold uh, early March, but if we look uh, in, for instance, the West End car park, those bays have been adjusted and the equipment for charging your electric vehicle are now in place. Primary engineer, absolutely great project. One of the former leaders was extremely keen on this. Um, 40, 40K was committed to this. Um, it's nearing completion of the second year. I believe last year, a year six people won uh, the prize be an engineer for a day for the whole of at this eastern region absolutely fantastic entrepreneurship growth funding program this is temporary on hold uh, and the, the reason for this as we're doing the town fund this match funding could actually deliver uh, a, a much bigger impact on any of the projects in the future um, NNDR incentive relocation fund remains live. This is an incentive scheme that uh, in, in <clears throat> that encourages people to um, move their business into the area. Supporting countrywide enterprise enterprise coordinators. Um, this is delivered through the LEP and Careers and Enterprise Company. This project has been completed, and it was an eight hundred pound spend. Support for the high street through the use of technology. Initially, this project was conceived as a shopping app. The rate <coughs> the retailers didn't really support this, so the leader and deputy at the time agreed a smaller project on social media and Visit Boston Facebook page was born. Obviously, again, with COVID-19, we have not been able to promote any activities because basically there, there aren't any. Um, by mid-February, when with the impact of COVID-19 becoming a, a national matter of concern, um, the impact of, on the wider economy immediately became a cause for concern. Key end headlines on the impact of the business community, 71% have furloughed staff. 69% have less than three months cash flow. 20% of retailers may not reopen. 5.1% drop in retail sales for March, the largest drop in 30 years. However, not a surprise because most places were closed. 94% of millennials and Generation Z have dramatically changed their shopping habits. As a result, spending much less on experiences. 24% of boomers said events were impacting on spend and 34% of Generation X said events were impacting on spend. Um, the review of this project creates an opportunity to use the funds within this business rates pilot fund to make a great impact to assist with the recovery of the business community and mitigate some of the impact of COVID-19 COVID through uh, through the borough. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, 
I'll go through, outline the recommendations, and then I'll move it, and then uh, anybody can ask questions. Uh, the first part is to agree to amend the recommendations of the cabinet, re cabinet report dated 5th of June 2019 for the reasons set out in this report. Two, to allocate 170,000 to the business recovery fund delegated to the director of growth in consultation with the chief finance officer and leader and deputy of the council. Three, to allocate 30,000 pounds to support for the high street through the use of technology and delegated to the director of growth in consultation with the leader and portfolio holder for finance. Four is to allocate 50,000 to a feasibility proposal fund and delegate that to the director of growth in consultation with the leader and portfolio holder for finance. Finally, to allocate 50,000 to support business short-term recovery fund and delegate that once again to director of growth in consultation with the leader and portfolio for finance. Um, I've read, read those out. I've, I've read um, the effect of COVID-19. Um, I'll now ask any of the cabinet me uh, members if they have any questions. So, Councillor Brown? Um, no, I don't actually, Leader. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Griggs? Um, no questions, but a couple of comments saying I think that the new proposals are fantastic. Uh, yeah, a business recovery fund and um, the support for small businesses fund and will be vital. Yeah, we all know that high streets are in decline as it is. Um, yeah, even going back to when I was a child, there were a lot more shops about. Um, and the shopping experience was more full and you could get more things. Shame on Woolies forever to go and bust. But um, I think you know, th these funds are really crucial for the people of Boston to ensure that actually they can continue to get what they require from shopping in Boston and obviously to help the businesses and their employees to retain jobs. Thank you for that, Councillor Griggs. I, I, I believe the same as you, support local or lose it. Councillor Howard. Um, thank you, Leader. No, I've no specific questions, just a, a small brief comment. I uh, totally agree with what uh, Councillor Griggs has just said, uh, and I am keen to get involved in all these projects um, because obviously with my business background, uh, I do appreciate how uh, the uh, economics and commerce work. So I'm very much looking forward to getting involved in these. Thank you for that. Councillor Sherman. Thank you, Leader. Nothing to add. Thank you very much. Councillor Stevens. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I thought the report was really, really interesting. And um, thank you. Uh, but I have nothing to add to it. Thank you very much. Councillor Welton. Yeah, thank you, Leader. <clears throat> I think it's important to, to note on the report that um, the money was put into reserves. And it it's fantastic having money put into reserves but if we just sit them in the bank and don't use them then that is not a good idea by using that money to help with the promotion of the town and businesses and all the other things that are being done i think that's a brilliant uh, move and there was a, a part of your report where you mentioned about a previous leader i think i'd like to put it on record that that previous leader was councillor cooper who was extremely hard working behind the scenes to make sure that some of these projects um, were um, turned from concept and ideas into reality. And I think without his, his, his work behind the scenes, that wouldn't have happened. So I think it's fair that um, we as cabinet uh, recognize that previous cabinet members and the impact and things that they've done in the past are now starting to come to fruition. Thank you, Peter. Yes, I, I concur with uh, what you what you said. Um, a lot, a lot of effort gone in into this. Um, I'll just make a um, a comment on reserves. Um, it's nice to have them there and be able to support people going forward. But obviously, thing is with reserves, you can only spend them once. But I'm I'm quite happy to uh, propose the recommendations in the in this report. So do I have a seconder? Uh, yes, Councillor Howard will second the motion. Thank you very much. 
Um, recommendations have been moved and seconded, so I'll move to the vote. Um, Lorraine, will you call out the cabinet, name, cabinet members' names in alphabetical order and they will respond. Thank you. Thank you, Leader. Councillor Brown? Uh, for. Councillor Griggs? For. Councillor Howard? For. Councillor Sharman? For. Councillor Skinner? For. Councillor Stevens? For. Councillor Welton? For. Unanimously carried, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we now move on to item six, which is um, the COVID-19 budget impact report. Um, and I will ask Councillor Martin Howard to present. Could you bring Councillor Howard to the screen, please? Thank you. Thank you, Leader. Um, yes, the COVID-19 budget impact report. Um, I don't really like to be the bearer of bad news. Um, but obviously we all need to be aware of the situation uh, and just to say that we're not the only council that's in this in this position. Uh, but the COVID-19 budget impact report um, um, for, for your information, uh, it's a projected position uh, whilst we're still in the heart of, of response to the virus. Um, so obviously there, there's going to be um, sort of significant changes and it's a very fluid situation. Um, there are significant impacts being experienced and more are to be expected. We have been helping support government response via payments of business grants and so far to date over 1,100 have been paid out which totals £12.5 million. Uh, with ex extension to the scheme being recently announced plus CTS council tax support that is, uh, additional award being applied via a software update. The main income losses, which is obviously going to be uh, a thing that is going to impact us, um, are the leisure and parking um, areas. Currently, the estimate um, totals uh, of an of a income loss of £1.7 million. Also, additional costs uh, for IT uh, setting up working from home, homelessness and transformation programme non-achievements. The government announced commitment to cover costs uh, and there's been two tranches uh, totaling £3.2 billion pounds so far. Uh, us as a council in the first tranche received £47,000. In the second tranche we received £703,000. These only partly offset our losses. Um, so, um, also, future years are uncertain and, and will depend on how the economy is brought back as well as how customers respond to this. Further support is hoped and expected, but <laughs> ongoing lobbying is obviously es essential. Uh, Lincolnshire combined efforts through Lincolnshire Finance Offices, Ministry of Housing Control and Local Governments are also collecting data on impacts monthly, on a monthly basis. We are obviously continuing to monitor impacts and we'll report back regularly uh, as and when we can. Uh, there are longer term concerns around council tax base uh, and business rates income. The fair funding and business rate retention issues have been deferred for another year. Also, business rate revaluation postponement announcement has been made. Um, so all in all, uh, not really good news but we're doing what we can under the circumstances and we are obviously lobbying uh, the situation as I say is very fluid uh, but we will uh, certainly um, I as finance portfolio holder with the uh, assistance of, of Mr Julian and his team will be updating uh, on a regular basis as soon as we get you know, uh, the information uh, and that's really the impact report Thank you for that, Councillor Howard. Um, not not a pleasant one to to convey to people. Um, this is um, a very serious situation which we uh, find ourselves in, and um, we we have been lobbying to the government, etc. Um, but there 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 again, everybody has. And you did mention that there are other councils in worse state than us. Indeed, they are. There are even within Lincolnshire. Um, I think the prudence that we've operated um, will stand us in good stead. But 
only for a short time because as I say you can only spend your reserves once. Um, I will now ask the cabinet members if they'd like to ask you questions and I'll start off with Councillor Brown please. Um, thank you Chairman. No I haven't really got any questions um, for, for Martin at this stage, thank you. Councillor Griggs. Uh, no questions, but a couple of comments. I, I think it's really crucial that all of us within the council, be it cabinet or other people, continue lobbying. And I don't know the report mentions it, but obviously we're, we're going to take a significant financial hit, um, which will impact on our ability to provide services in the future. Um, it'd be nice if central government said, yep, yeah, we'll pay every penny you've lost. Obviously, um, most councils are in a similar position to us. The problem is, even if they do, schemes we run especially of in housing for instance homes england frequently give us money and the um help to buy schemes may dry up quicker than anticipated so regardless of what happens it's going to have some real long-term effects on the ability to deliver in the way we've been delivering in the past thank you thank you councillor sherman no nothing to add thank you thank you Councilor Stevens. I don't have any questions, but it's it's certainly a reality check um, when you hear a report um, like you've just presented, Martin. Um, but it, it is as it is. We we've got COVID nineteen, and we've got to deal with what the outcome from it. But thank you for the report. Thank, thank you, you. Councillor Welton. Thank you, Leader. I just just a very brief comment that. In order to see where we're going, you need to look at where we are now, and where we are now is in a very bad situation. Um, and how long this goes on for, and the long-term impact will will be damaging to our town, and we need to have that in 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 the backs of our minds. And it's not just about the impact on some services; this has an impact. Um, on the community of Boston as a whole. It's not just about figures, it's about people. It's not just about buildings, it's about homes and it's about jobs and it's about everything that makes this, this town wonderful. So, you know, can I ask Councillor Howard to make sure that he is constantly on the ball with this? And I know he is. Um, and I know that on a day by day basis, he's, he's dealing with this. So, I think I'm, I'm confident we've got somebody there that is doing this and it's going to have an impact on every single one of us. And that does worry me immensely. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, uh, as you um, quite rightly said, yes, um, I am keeping my finger on the button uh, on a daily basis. Uh, I will update, uh, you know, as, as often as needed and, and when we've got the relevant information. But thank you for that, Nigel. Do, do we have a... A proposal for the recommendations in the report? Um, yeah, um, as I say, obviously I will propose it um, as I say uh, to be noted by cabinet and uh, again uh, as the information comes through uh, the cabinet will be updated. Thank you very much for that. Do we have a seconder? Yes, I'll second it, Chairman. I'm happy to second that. Thank you very much. Fight, fight amongst yourself. <laughs> I said it first. <laughs> okay, that's fine, Councillor Brown. Um, so we'll we'll move on now to Lorraine. And could you call out the cabinet members' um, names in alphabetical order? And I'm sure they will respond. Thank you, Leader. Mm. Councillor Brown. Oh. Le Griggs. Oh. Councillor Howard. Oh. Councillor Sharman? Four. Councillor Skinner? Four. Councillor Stevens? Four. Councillor Welton? Four. That's unanimously carried, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now because, because the next item um, has been adjourned to uh, a, the nearest convenient date, to give it the um, sort of importance it deserves. Uh, this then concludes the meeting and I thank you all for your attendance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Leader.